ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I am your host, David Stregi. And uh, I'm back with you to continue my uh, m reviews on the Les Miserables uh, adaptations. And uh, I come to you about the uh, 2012 uh, uh, version, which is uh, a musical adaptation based on Andrew Lloyd Weber's, I believe, Les Miserables. So uh, it is directed by Tom Hooper, who uh, originally uh, he directed The King's Speech and uh, went on to uh, direct The Danish Girl. Most Mostly he's done uh, stuff in TV like uh, Biker Grove, uh, Cold Feet, EastEnders, Love in a Cold Climate, uh, Daniel D uh, Duranda, uh, a short film called Yellow Bird, Prime Suspect 6, The Last Witness, uh, Elizabeth the, uh, the First, and uh, much of the John Adams TV miniseries from 2008. So uh, he's had some experience in doing films of this nature. Now, the Les Miserables uh, that he directed, it has a phenomenal cast in it. Um, we've got Hugh Jackman <coughs> playing John Beljon, Russell Crowe playing his opposite, Elizabeth, Anne Hathaway. <coughs> Amanda Seyfried, Sasha uh, Baron Cohen, uh, Helena B uh, Bonham Carter, who uh, is mostly known to uh, be part of uh, uh, some of uh, 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 she was in uh, Dark Shadows and uh, uh, quite a few others uh, d uh, dealing with. Uh, Edward Scissorhands director. So uh, we definitely have a lot of characters involved in here. Now, I have a strong connection to this story. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of how tortured Jean Valjean is. He is a man who has been convicted of only stealing, according to the book, a mouthful of bread. But in the various adaptations, we see that he has, steal, has stolen a loaf of bread. So yeah, I guess the variances of what he has actually stolen has somewhat changed over time. <coughs> but it was just something that small and insignificant. It was something that he stole to feed his family. And uh, he was thrown in prison. And uh, because he tried to escape, he got 19 years in prison. Now, his jailer was a uh, inspector by the name of Javert. Um, and in this version, we have uh, Hugh Jackman's character. He, uh, he is on the line 
um, uh, 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 chained with a bunch of men trying to haul in a huge, massive uh, English ship. Um, and uh, it's obvious that uh, Jean Valjean has an, a massive amount of strength because he is told by Javert, in at least in this version, to pick up the mast of this ship and drag it in. So we see Hugh Jackman's character pick up this mast and drag it halfway in before he is e even able to go back to his wh wherever he is being kept. And then he is <coughs> given a yellow ticket of leave, which says that he's on parole for life. Which means that he will probably never have a job or anything like that. So uh, he finds his way and he journeys, uh, uh, journeys. Um, now, uh, what I like is uh, uh, in the next uh, in the next period in the next scene is that um, he travels and finds his way to a convent, which uh, or, or at least the home of a priest. And uh, the priest is actually played by none other than Colm Wilkinson, uh, who actually played Jean Valjean in the musical. So it's almost like uh, that version of Jean Valjean is uh, standing up in the film to uh, pass on his role, which he is the man who I believe cut the role in the musical itself so um seeing him play this priest who basically buys his soul to uh um make him become an honest man now like i've said before in the previous adaptations the times uh, 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 of uh passage the the time later that he becomes this mayor um he uh becomes this uh basically in this uh, this version he, he becomes a um an owner of a place that uh, makes linens of some sort uh which might have been something that uh um uh, that uh he might have learned in uh passage of being in in the in a prison but he might not have but in the previous uh a version from 1978 uh i believe that in that version uh, at least uh he made a trade of some sort uh using or uh, that he had learned from the prison, but in here, that doesn't make. Uh, uh, in here, in this version, there isn't really a known profession that he uh, that he has learned. All we know is that he is being hunted uh, 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 by this Javert. Now, going uh, going to the uh, the singing, Hugh Jackman. Um, kind of makes these songs his own because he sings he sings differently he he is not able to um from what i understand he's not able to go as uh, as strongly as Colin wilkinson but i believe that he is able to make the songs his own way because they are sung a little differently, so, uh, sung like they're talked a little bit. Now, as far as Russell Crowe's character um, in mind, um, I think that Russell Crowe has a very good screen presence. And though I can see him in this role, he is unable to reach those high notes that Javert should really reach throughout the film. 
He instead he goes low, uh, when technically the characters' songs go high. Um, at least match Jean Beljean. At least, and that is the thing uh, thing that um, that troubles me the most. Um, um, as well. So the story uh, line follows him into his being a mayor. Uh, or um, it's called something else in here. I I, I forget exactly what, but uh, but. Regardless, he is a man of su uh, some repute, um, and uh, people look up to him uh, as kind of like a leader. So in any case, there, uh, there's a woman in the factory uh, that goes by the name of uh, uh, Fontaine. Evidently, it is found out that she is sending money to her child, who is living with two uh, a, a couple uh, called the Thernadiers. And it is improper uh, for a woman that is unwed to have a child. So uh, while Javert has come into town and uh, wants to speak with the mayor, he is distracted, um, Jean Valjean. He is distracted um, in his role as the mayor. Uh, so he leaves the uh, the... Uh, situation of Fontaine to one of his workers, and she is ultimately fired. She has to find her way on the street. She has to go sell her hair, and ultimately she uh, contracts some kind of disease while she has uh, basically whored herself. Uh, and there is a public, um, there is a public fight that breaks out among someone who uh, tried to, you know, have his way with Fontaine and uh, Javert to get, has to get involved. And uh, the mayor, uh, or uh, Jean Valjean's character, uh, has to intervene. And this is when he learns of his wrongdoing. Uh, unfortunately, it is almost too late because uh, Fontaine is uh, dying, uh, but he ultimately sends for Cosette, um, and in uh, when Fontaine on her deathbed asks him to take care of Cosette, he has to escape Javert's uh, uh, graces once again to go and uh, grab. Uh, this Cosette from the Thernadiers and uh, uh, ultimately he does. They hide in a monastery and it just so happens a man that he saved, uh, 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 saved under a cart is actually the gardener. So he um, so he acts like the gardener's brother, and he gets Cosette to grow up in the convent, and uh, so on and so forth. Well, there is a young man named Marius, who was played by Eddie Redmayne, which I honestly have to say, this was the first actor, uh, um, besides maybe one of his, um, one of his gentlemen, uh, young men, who are in the revolution that uh, that he's about to be, uh, partake in? <coughs> he's the first man that I can actually say actually has a voice. Um, and uh, this was the first, uh, most first voice that I noticed that I actually you know looked up at. So uh, I think that his uh, was the strongest in this musical. Um, uh, the second per person that I thought that was the strongest was actually none other than uh, Eponine, which was, who, who she was played by Samantha Parks. Now, this is the first adaptation that I can actually say that uh, Eponine, which is the daughter of the Thernadiers, 
um, actually has a role. Um, I believe it was added as an extra to, uh, to, uh, to have this, this uh, female who kind of grows up knowing Marius and uh, being in love with him. And yet he falls in love with Cosette, who was, uh, uh, who had actually grown up in her household. Uh, going backwards a little bit um, with uh, the Thernadiers, uh, the Thernadiers is running in at, at that point in time. And they, they don't run it with very much disp uh, respute. They steal from their customers. They uh, um, and they are very, very naughty, <laughs> so to speak. But that being said, I believe that Sasha Baron Cohen should not have been actually uh, cast for the role of Thernadier, mainly because it seemed like he was just standing there and being there. It didn't even seem like he was acting at all. He had no emotion on his face. And to, uh, uh, to me, even though he did lie, uh, uh, lie down underneath the table to go with the flow, uh, flow of things, it was like he was just there. Um, and uh, to me, the role should have uh, uh, been a hell of a lot more, uh, you know, he should have been more into it. He, uh, he should have had more enthusiasm. And I think I think that in, um, it made him a bad actor uh, for uh, for this role, and I was very very disappointed in that. Um, uh, but uh, ultimately, Marius uh, is part of a group of young men who uh, gather together and are not happy with the way their government runs things. So what uh, what they have decided to do is make a statement. Uh, uh, to, uh, th and, uh, they are ultimately, uh, 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 men who go up against the whole army of England in, in some part of the town and they barricade themselves behind a bunch of, uh, uh, uh wagons and uh, uh, whatnot. And ultimately they eventually die. But all throughout all, the, all of this, John Valjean learns that Marius is in love with his um, charge, uh, Cosette, uh, and uh, originally they were they were going to flee the scene, but uh, but because she loves this man, uh, he goes to the barricades and and uh, to try to save him. Now also. Uh, Russell Crowe's character, Zavert, he has actually been watching these young men. Uh, now, he does not or has not realized that Jean Valjean's character has actually been living among this uh, uh, this group. He, uh, uh, When Zavert is actually captured by the young men, uh, it is Zavert's character that goes in uh, who, who tries to save uh, who goes to save Marius and uh, he basically takes it upon himself to, uh, to go and kill the prisoner uh, uh, the the rebel the uh, uh, the uh, the man who has uh, been called a spy and uh, so but because he has become the man that he is he lets Javert go and Javert uh cannot understand why and uh, so in fact Zvert realizes that <coughs> Jean Valjean has actually become an honest man and in that in that instance it's when he realizes that you know he, he always thought that the uh, the law is uh, it, it, you're either one or the uh, the other and uh, because he'd known Jean Valjean as this other uh, for so long, he, he did not think that uh, this man could change in any way, shape, or form. Once you're a criminal, you're always a criminal. So once he found that out, it was so hard to accept. He killed himself. Now, in this ending, uh, when he falls off this bridge that he is actually standing on while he's singing, <coughs> 
this is the only ending uh, in his suicide that I can actually believe because it was actually some height. There was actually a ledge that looked like it was underneath the, the fountain as it was going down, and it looked like he could actually break his neck. In the last two adaptations, <coughs> it was really hard to believe Javert's suicide, that he had actually killed himself because of the way that, uh, that he was supposed to have died. So therein, uh, I, I mean, if you enjoy this uh, uh, to a T and can, uh, and can watch it in its uh, entirety, enjoy it for what it is, that's fine. But I, I noticed some of these peculiarities. I wasn't exactly a fan of some of them. But um, I really enjoy the story, uh, and I enjoyed it enough to uh, to, uh, to watch it and own it. <coughs> I, again, I love Russell Crowe, but I don't think I think he did as uh, as well as he could uh, could have as a singer. I believe his voice is just that low. I was actually surprised that his voice could go as high as it did. Uh, so he must have had some kind of a voice coach, but. In the end, I enjoy, I enjoyed it. I, I I wasn't an entire fan of the way that uh, Hugh Jackman sang the films or sang the songs because I I I was so used to Colm Wilkinson's voice. But seeing it several times, I'm actually getting used to his ver uh, uh, version of the way, uh, way he sings things. But there is my review on this film. So it, it, if you, if you want to go ahead and like and subscribe to this uh, review, go right ahead. Um, you're going to obviously have a different opinion than I, uh, but uh, this is my opinion as, as it stands. So hopefully you enjoy it. Definitely like and subscribe. I hope I haven't been on too long. <coughs> and enjoy the rest of the reviews uh, that, uh, that I will be having on this channel. So definitely check out uh, some more of my stuff on this channel. Like and subscribe. You have a great e evening.